All right, everyone. How are we? Welcome to Tier 3. Um, all's good. My kettle's boiling. We'll wait for a few more. But people might have forgot that I'm only doing Tuesdays, but I'm here. I'll put it out on social media, so I hope some people join. Otherwise, I'm having a one-to-one. -one. Make my tea, anyway. The more people that turn up, they're bound to. There's somebody. Email everybody. Tell them to come and join us. Have a cup of tea. <laughs> Kitchen's looking good. I've got some new biscuits today, which is quite exciting. People are on now. Feeling better about myself. How's everyone? Good. Hi, Jim. You all right? Email everybody. All at Empty Fraser. <laughs> Go and see Ian's kitchen. I've got some new biscuits. I don't know if Rachel Fairfield's on, uh, but Rachel Fairfield mentioned raspberry Jaffa cakes. As everybody knows, I do like a Jaffa cake. So um, I, I spotted some pineapple Jaffa cakes. Pineapple Jaffa cakes. So that's what I'm going for. Just open them. Completely new. No, I had a pineapple Jaffa cake. One thing I've noticed, there's only 10 in here. I think, I'm sure Jaffa cakes used to do 12 in a pack. I think that's, that kind of, uh, that's kind of reducing numbers. So pineapple Jaffa cakes, it does you one, looks like someone's had a bite out of it. Um, and they smell really pineapple-y. I don't know if anybody's had those. I'll put these away. Obviously, I won't be eating any more of these today at all. Um, so put those away. So pineapple Jaffa cakes. Anybody had pineapple Jaffa cakes? Um, it's a resounding no. Intrigued. I'll, I'll try it. Live test. Never had one. Hmm. Not for me. <laughs> I will obviously eat 10, but um, I prefer a normal jam cake. Um, so if we can cascade that to Rachel Fairfield. Oh, no, Brian. We need to sort that out, Brian. Um, can we get a pack over, please? Um, I'll get them sent to you. I, well, I'll send you the orange ones, Brian. I think that's important. We need to send you the orange ones. Do you not have Jaffa, do you not have Jaffa cakes? Do you not have Jaffa cakes in the US? This is like, it's like amazing. This is amazing news. That there's, there's no Jaffa cakes. Not a thing here. Oh well, this is devastating. <laughs> General, I was kind of joking, but thank you. That. Uh, <laughs> Um, not a thing. Wow. Oh, you're all eating Hershey's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In Hershey's Kisses or whatever they're called. Um, so that's fine. I'll have another bite because the second bite might be better. Mm, no. Um, so I might try the raspberry ones because Rachel gave them a bit of a boost. Or at least not a thing. You know, there was April, oh, apricot jaffers. I thought... Oh, it's crowded to the apricot. Did Rachel say raspberry, or am I just making that up? This is just like, um, obviously, other biscuits are available. Um, anyway. This mug could be something else you've never heard of as well, Brian, actually. Um, a game called Sabutio. I don't think that would have, um, that, that won't across the Atlantic either. Um, so, anyway. Right, I've got a question. And funny enough, my question won't cross the Atlantic either today. I'm going to be doing coaching. I thought I'd have a question about coaches. So I thought, and I know, again, a lot of people know I quite like football. So I've got a coaching question about football. And the question is, Alex Ferguson, who used to be the manager of Manchester United, I'm sure everybody's heard of him, even if you don't like football. But my question is, how many trophies has Alex Ferguson won as a coach? As a football manager coach, how many trophies has he won? Um, so that's my question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I do believe it's called soccer in America, Brian. <laughs> uh, but it, it is football, I'm afraid. Um, it is football. Um, wow. Um, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm guessing Kerry, you're not a big football fan. Um, um, just to help out a little bit here, just to help out a little bit here, knowing nothing about football, not ably demonstrated as well, if I might say so. I'll give you a little clue here. He's very, very successful. And Alex Ferguson won the Premier League 13 times. So that's a little clue. Um, so, uh, Kerry, you, you've, you've kind of gone into the Matt Croft world of not knowing anything, um, which is great. Where is Crofty? Is Crofty not there today? I literally know nothing. It's just a guess. Nobody could possibly know. Nobody could possibly know how much tea fitted in the biggest teapot either. It's like, you know, you don't... 
Well, just after educated guesses. Anyway, let's talk about coaching. <laughs> I thought it was 13. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, <wait. laughs> um, so great. Maybe I need to refocus my questions. Anyway, we're going to talk about coaching today. And um, and the first thing I'm going to talk about is what, what coaching, what we mean by coaching, because it's one of those words that kind of gets banded about a bit, or we need a coaching style of leadership and all that kind of stuff. And um, so I talk about pure coaching because there is a bit of a continuum. So where you can kind of show someone what to do, a bit like one-to-one -one coaching, um, that sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> take the prices. Yeah, that's not bad. Higher, lower, higher. Um, the price is right. The price is right. It's clearly a thing in America, though. Um, so you can you can kind of help people. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down the other end and talk about pure coaching, what we know as pure coaching. And um, this is about where we unlock in the potential in somebody else. And particularly at work, professionally, a lot of people will, will, will know how to do this. They'll be able to work things out. And it's, and it's our job as a, as a leader or a coach to help them with that, not to supply the answer. I, I as a facilitator trainer, have a great desire to, to advise people and let people know how to do things better. That's kind of what my job is. And um, somebody gave me a really good piece of advice that I'd like to think I should take up a bit more. But it was... To be a good coach, you have to let go of your own ego. Um, and <laughs> I don't know where that should go. And acknowledge that perhaps you're not the, 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 the only person who can do this task. But what you can do is you can help somebody else do something. Now, I'm going to tell a story, um, unsurprisingly, just about my experience of coaching. As everybody, uh, most people know out there, I've, I've got a son. And when he was younger, he used to come around to mine at the weekend. And he'd do his homework with me. And um, he phoned up one day and we arranged to come over. And um, I said, what homework have you got, mate? And he said, I've got maths and Spanish. I went, absolutely perfect. I'll have a look at that when you come over. So um, he kind of turned up and I said, OK, let's get your homework out of the way. Let's do that. And then we can go and do some stuff. And um, so I said, let's do the maths first. Because I'm, I'm all right with numbers, quite good. Quite like numbers, that kind of stuff. So, he got the, so he's got his books out and he said, this is what I've got to do. And I went, right, let's have a look. Let the dog see the rabbit. And I've gone, right, bang, bang, bang. This is all straightforward. You do this, then you do this, then you do this. You take this away from this. You add this, and boom, and that's the answer. And I kind of did a couple for him. Helpful dad. I went, away you go, son. You have a go. And he started doing one. And I went, no, 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 no. You're doing it wrong. You don't want to do it like that. You want to do it like this. Yeah. So I told him that. And I said, have another go. So I started doing, oh, yeah, that's better. And then I said, shall I show you one more? And I showed him. And then he started doing them. And I kind of marked them and went, no, that's wrong. No, do it like this. No, do it like that. And we kind of got through the maths. And uh, it was all finished. And then Spanish. Now, when I was at school, Spanish um, wasn't a subject. And just to clarify, Spain had been discovered. We just didn't used to do Spanish. It was just like French and German when I was a kid. And so I know, I know no Spanish, nothing. Uh, maybe hola, something like that. And um, so we got the books out and I looked at it and it's like, it was all in Spanish. And I thought, I, I don't quite know what to do here. So I went, have you, uh, have you done anything like this before? Uh, how did you get on? Where did you find out the answers? Did anyone help you? Um, what grade did you get? What grade would you like to get this time? Yeah, all these kind of questions, yeah. And so Ben would go away and he'd do some work and then he'd show me and I'd go, how, how well do you think you've done? And he'd kind of tell me. Then I say, what, what do you think you can do? Can you make that better? And I asked him what grade he thinks he'd get. And he told me, and I said, you know, what do you think you've got to do to get a better grade? And he'd tell me to go away and do that. And he'd correct it. And he'd come back, show it to me. And he said this. I said, are you happy to give it to your teacher? And he said, yeah, yeah, I am. And I went, no, well, that's brilliant. I said, that's all finished then. And then he said to me, thanks for helping me with my Spanish, Dad. Now, bizarrely, I'd, I'd contributed nothing yeah, other than questions. And that's kind of pure coaching. And good coaches don't have to be able to do what they're coaching. You know, coaching and sport are synonymous. They go together. But the best people don't make the best coaches. Yeah, otherwise, like, who would coach Roger Federer? If he was a better tennis player than Roger Federer, surely he'd be playing tennis. Um, so, you know, who is coaching these people? Generally, they're people who help people get better. That's what a good coach does. They listen, they observe, they watch, and they help. They're not steering people down the path they want to take. They're letting the person find their own path. Now, 
I'll introduce you, because how we do this, can we just ask questions? Well, there's a model that I'm sure many of you know, and that's the GROW model, um, G-R-O-W. Um, so the GROW model, because it helps people grow, helps people grow and self-develop. And just to let you know what those four things stand for, the G is for goal, the R is for reality, the O is for um, <laughs> options. I, should, you know, I completely forgot there for a moment. And the W is for will. And um, now what do we mean by this? So often somebody will say, oh, I want to do my math homework like, like Ben. I want to do my Spanish homework. But what's the goal? What's the date on it? What's the deadline on it? Um, what's the complete objective? So what standard? Why do you want to do that? And that can be at work about, you know, I want to go up, I want to take the next step forward, something along those lines. Um, exercise I use when I'm training this um, with a group of people is I get them to coach me. And um, my goal, I start off with, I'm going on holiday in a month and I want to get beach body ready. Yeah, that's, that's the question that I pose people. Now, there's lots of things there linked to goal. It's like about where am I going on holiday? Because if I'm going to Venice Beach, there's quite a lot of work to be done. If I'm going to Blackpool, I'm good to go. So it, it, it's kind of, you know, what's the goal? What's driving me to that goal? Is that because other people say that I need to, to be beach body ready? How will I know when I'm beach body ready? Is that going to be a feeling or is that going to be a physical thing? Is it about weight? Is it about tone? What's it about? So really specify the goal. The R is the reality. So my example, what's happening at the moment? So what am I eating? What am I drinking? What exercise? What, have I got physical ailments that stop me doing certain things? So what's the reality of the scenario? Then we can start thinking about options. So what do you enjoy? What don't you enjoy? <laughs> they, they do. Everyone is already beach body. Yeah. They, they. <laughs> um, so what are my options? Do I like exercise? Now, I, I kind of know, you know, I, if I stopped eating for a month, I'd lose weight. Yeah. But we have to get some options. So what am I willing to do? What aren't I willing to do? And um, I like chocolate. No surprise there. But am I willing to stop eating chocolate? Because it's easy to go, I won't eat chocolate. And then so that then it's the job of the coach. Is that realistic? How much chocolate do you eat now? And, and all those kind of things. So options. Do I want to spend money on it? Because, you know, I could just maybe get enough surgery, lose some weight. Uh, so what options have I got? And finally, the will. How much do I want it? And because this model initiated in sport, how much do people want it? Often they, they like run through a wall to do stuff. When we're talking about work, you know, score it out of 10. How much do you want to attain that goal? Now, John Whitmore, whose model this is, said if people don't score it a 10, are they really hungry to do it? I'd say if I'm getting an 8 out of people at work, that's good. But, you know, if, you, if you're sitting at a 6 now, what's going to push you to an 8 to want to achieve that goal? How, how are you going to want it enough? Now, the thing I like about the GROW model is, is it's not a linear model. Um, so you can start anywhere and you can double back and you can go again. So you might get a goal, but then realize the options, actually the speed makes the goal impossible. And you can challenge that. You say, so actually you're going on holiday in a week, but you want to lose four stone. You know, so now we need to go back. What's the reality? <laughs> can you rebook your holiday? Yeah, and that's why I like the model. Now, of course, as a coach, you can make a suggestion. I think I see this a lot with, with Grow, where people say, oh, you, you just have to keep asking questions. And you, can, you, can ask, you can ask a question. You can make a suggestion. You can say, my experience, something I've seen is, can I help? Can I offer a suggestion? But what, what I want you to remember is don't just pump your ideas out. So that Grow model, G-R-O-W, most used coaching model, not linear. People can go backwards, so you can bank or crank it. You can start wherever. You can start with a W. You know, okay, we're going to have a chat. That's great. How much do you really want this? How much do you want it? Could be the opening question before you even know what they're coming to you with. Um, so let's grow on Whitmore. You can Google that. You can find lots out. So that's just a little 10-minute overview on coaching and, and that model, what it is. But remember, it's for not, not for the coach to give the answer. It's for the coach to help the learner find the answer. And like I say, you do not have to be the best to be the best coach. Now, how many trophies did Alex Ferguson win? Because I know that really that's why everybody's um, stayed online. Um, so um, there's, there's a few guesses ranging from six down there. Um, 
Gemma Harvey, 15, Clara, 12. Um, Brian Fernandez, 17, who by his own acknowledgement knows absolutely nothing about soccer. Carly thought it was 13, uh, but then went up to 38. So he thought, must have won some more. Uh, Matt Plants come in there with 35. A, a well-known football aficionado who I would think would be very close. But in fact, the, the winner is, is Clara with her second guess of 58. Because, um, because your man, Alec Ferguson... Well, there's a bit of a there's a bit of difference because he won a bit of one Mickey Mouse trophy up in Scotland, but it's either 48 or 49, depending where you go. So he won a lot of trophies, 48 or 49. So Clara, you've smashed it. Um, everyone else needs a bit of coaching on football. Um, thanks for joining me. I'm here next Tuesday. We're not doing Thursdays anymore. It's just Tuesdays. It's just a once a weeker. And um, I was training this morning, and I was like thinking old topics, and I thought I'd talk about teams and team dynamics. It's a topic that we all hear a lot about, and we're all in teams. So I thought that might be a nice little topic. So we're going to talk about Team Dynamics on Tuesday, where I will have another cup of tea, and I might get some new Jaffa cakes. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you all soon, guys.